All right, so let's start at the beginning. So remember, the Calvin cycle occurs after the light dependent reaction. What were the products of the light dependent reaction? Secondly, I hopefully you answered that question correctly. Um, what is going to be coming into the Calvin cycle? And we can see that we're going to have carbon dioxide coming into the Calvin cycle. And so we're going to put three molecules of carbon dioxide into the Calvin cycle. And where is the, cal where is the carbon dioxide coming from? It's coming from the atmosphere. Remember that carbon dioxide makes up a pretty small percentage of our atmosphere, less than 1%. But because it is a powerful greenhouse gas, an increase in CO2 in our atmosphere can have some pretty profound influences on the temperature of our planet. In the past, for the most part, the amount of of cellular respiration which is done by the mitochondria and the amount of photosynthesis kind of balanced each other out and if you remember back from the early part of this uh, of the first lecture on photosynthesis the equation for cellular respiration is the opposite of photosynthesis so on a whole in the past the levels have pretty much balanced each other out and the there was not that much co2 in the atmosphere However, with the beginning of the Industrial Revolution about 250 years ago, when we started to use coal as an energy source versus just burning wood or whale oil, um, the amount of CO2 being put into the atmosphere has outstripped plants' ability to absorb that CO2 in the process of photosynthesis. So as a result, we have, we have had an increasing amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. So that was just a little bit of an aside, but it's an important one because it is happening and it's changing our climate. So anyways, here we got, we got three CO2 molecules coming in. And you see that little word, Rabisco? That's an enzyme. Unlike other enzymes, it does not end in ASE, but it is still an important enzyme and probably the most abundant protein on the planet. Okay, it has a strong affinity for CO2. And uh, what Rubisco is going to do, CO2 is a substrate molecule, as is this other molecule, this 5-carbon ribulose bisphosphate, or otherwise known as RUBIP. And you can see that on the left side of the diagram here. The RUBIP and the CO2 are both going to act as substrate molecules. Rubisco is the enzyme, so the CO2 and, and RUBIP will dock into the active site of the Rubisco enzyme, and the enzyme will basically force those two together. It's going to force three molecules of ribulose bisphosphate, three molecules of carbon together, and we're going to make three six-carbon molecules, which are immediately broken down into six three carbon phosphoglycerate. Do you need to know all these terms? No. I do expect you, however, to know that CO that what's coming into the cycle, that's CO2, I need you I want you to know the name of the enzyme, which is Rubisco, and I want you also to know the name of the molecule which CO2 is being joined to. That's that ribulose bisphosphate or RUBIP. Okay, so that process of joining inorganic CO2 from the atmosphere into an organic RUBIP molecule is known as carbon fixation. And again, that's just taking an inorganic CO2, jamming it onto an organic molecule, and, that, and then making another organic molecule carbon fixation. That's the first stage of um, the Calvin cycle. And then we're going to move on to the next stage. And as you can see here, one of the things that's going to happen is we're going to use some of the energy coming from uh, the light dependent reaction. <clears throat> so here we are in phase two. That is going to be reduction. 
and we're going to be using the energy or batteries uh, as we say, as shown in the uh, top part of the slide of ATP and NADPH. So once again, ATP provides the energy for rearranging the molecules. How does it do that? It does it by adding a phosphate onto the phosphoglycerate. And look at that, phos that, that three phosphoglycerate. It has only one phosphate on it. And then when we put the ATP in, we now have two phosphates on either side of that molecule. So now it's called 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. The 1 stands for the number 1 carbon, the 3 stands for the number 3 carbon, and the bi stands for two phosphates. Okay? So, so that's what's happening right there. And then they can go and... Uh, you know, let me just... Excuse me, guys. I had uh, Miss Simonetti just popped in uh, with a student and interrupted me. But anyways, let's get back to it. Um, as you can see, we're using the ATP to phosphorylate that phosphoglycerate. That's providing energy. And then what's the NADPH doing? Well, the NADPH is adding electrons to this molecule. That's called reduction. Remember, when something is reduced, it gains electrons. And those electrons have a lot of energy in them. Those are high energy electrons. Once again, where did the ATP and the NADPH come from? That's right. It came from the light dependent reactions. So that's phase two. And at the end of phase two, look what's popping out. We get a three carbon sugar comes out. So wait a minute. I thought I thought I, I thought you said, Mr. K said, that we get a glucose molecule. Well, you don't get a glucose molecule. You get a three-carbon sugar. So how many times must this phase occur in order to get a glucose molecule? That's right, twice. The last and final stage of the Calvin cycle is the recycling of the ribulose bisphosphate, the rubip. So we get a Three carbon sugar comes out, and that's going to leave us with um, five three carbon G3P molecules. We have to use some more energy because we have to make a five carbon rubit molecule, and we're going to use some more ATP there. Okay, so that's the that's the Calvin cycle: carbon fixation, reduction, and regeneration. And I hope you enjoyed that short but sweet lecture.